and in the spring another commissioning of Phantom Squadron 892, which in 1970 will embark in HMS Ark Royal. After the commissioning, the Phantoms, accompanied by sea vixens, mark the approaching end of an era with a flypast. And it wasn't long before the first Sea Lord and Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral Sir Michael Lefanu, got the feel of the Phantom. Watched by Captain Cunningham and piloted by Commander Anthony Pearson, he flew from Yeovilton at dawn to Allied Forces Southern Europe, Naples, to confer with Commander-in-Chief South, Admiral Horatio Rivero. If you take a day return by Phantom, the world is indeed a small place these days. Admiral Lefanu touched down again the same afternoon at Yeovilton. After discarding the informality of his flying suit, it was back to his desk in Whitehall before dusk. Sunday, May the 4th, and a dramatic touchdown at Wisley, Surrey, during the Daily Mail air race, when Lieutenant Commander Borrowman brought the Navy Phantom in from New York in just 5 hours, 3 minutes, 18.8 .8 seconds. On touchdown, two tyres burst, and the plane had to be skillfully steered to a standstill. A Wessex helicopter was already airborne, following up the jet and saving precious seconds in picking up the observer, Lieutenant Paul Waterhouse, the moment he sprinted from the disabled Phantom. Only when the tyres stopped smouldering and Lieutenant Commander Borrowman emerged from the cockpit did his wife Anne uncross her fingers and toes. A few minutes later, Lieutenant Dines put the helicopter down on an open site near the post office tower. In the Mediterranean, the Fleet Air Arms 892 Squadron, under its commanding officer, Lieutenant Commander Brian Davis, embarked four Phantoms on the 83,000-ton United States aircraft carrier Saratoga. The British versions of the Phantom were exercising, along with their opposite numbers, on air defence missions. 1970 will see the squadron embarked in HMS Ark Royal. Early in the year, a happy occasion, as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, was welcomed by Captain Ray Ligo on board HMS Ark Royal, recommissioning at Devonport after a three-year, three million pound refit. Commander Nicholas Hunt was first to be presented to Her Majesty. Before she went to join the 4,000 guests, including several past captains, gathered in the upper hangar for the commissioning ceremony. cake cutting and the 20 minute service, the Queen Mother met people from every department of the ship. Young Barry Marshall didn't bat an eyelid as the Queen Mother chatted to his mother Wendy and father leading steward James Marshall. Barry, three months old, couldn't have cared less about his star part in Ark Royal's big day. Fast work in the West Country, the reborn Ark Royal sails from Plymouth a week after starting her new commission. For wives, sweethearts and well-wishers, a sight to remember the Navy's most powerful ship off for sea trials, her flight deck reshaped for the Navy's first Phantoms. Ark Royal, steaming in the Murray Firth during evaluation trials of the vertical takeoff Harrier jet, was host to some top brass in May, when Vice Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Lewin, and Vice Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Smallwood, came to see Harriers of Number 1 Squadron, RAF, put through their paces. Vice Admiral Lewin found a Harrier to fit him without too much trouble, but he'd left the hot seat by the time these remarkable aircraft took to the air unassisted and made carrier flying look deceptively easy. spectacular than takeoff, and the indications are that we'll be seeing a lot more of the Harrier in the future. In fact, the Navy looks like doing quite well in the 70s. New ships, new weapons, new equipment. We end the 1970 edition with a blast of hot air. The men of Ark Royal look on as preparations are made to launch her first ever hot air balloon. Oh well, it's one alternative to fixed wing flying, I suppose.
When the Bristol Bell had attained her full vital statistics, Ark Royal's intrepid aviators, Lieutenant Terry Adams and Lieutenant Howard Draper, were cleared for takeoff. Destination Malta, not very far distant, by the way. All in a day's ballooning for Lieutenant Adams, who's got a license for this kind of thing. Making a landfall in Malta was not so easy, owing to uncertain winds, which must have made the escorting chopper feel a bit superior. But although the balloon hit the ground a bit sharpish, Bristol Bell was bang on for a rendezvous with Malta's postal chief. The object of the exercise, to hand over mail from Ark Royal at the GPO in Valletta, where the letters were specially stamped. And here's Posty Adams looking properly pleased with himself. And Howard Draper, thankful it was over, at last. And that's the last word on Scranbag 1970.